Welcome to Module 1, Introduction to Network Cabling Systems. I'm Ted Chandler, your instructor in this online course. In this first module, you will learn to first discuss the importance of telecommunications cabling. Next, you'll be able to identify the telecommunications cabling standards that are key to designing, installing, and testing telecommunications cabling. Then you'll be able to name the six subsystems of a structured cabling infrastructure plant. And finally, you'll be able to discuss the basics, construction, and performance of copper, optical fiber, and coax cable. The need for broadband, that is voice, video, and data speed or bandwidth, is driving network electronics faster and faster. And network electronics need infrastructure to carry the bits, such as optical fiber and Category 5E or Category 6 copper cabling. Note that network speeds to the desktop have increased 100 times since 1995, from 10 megabits per second to 1,000 megabits per second today. Also note that for today's network speeds, you need at least Category 6 copper cable to the desktop and optical fiber in the backbone. And note that in order to have those speeds to the desktop, you must have 10 times that speed in the backbone. Also note that LANs today are switched. In other words, they do not use the older hubs, rather exclusively intelligent switches. This slide shows that network cabling is at the core of high-speed telecommunications today. Also, active electronics, such as the computers, switches, routers, and printers, are all connected together in a network and depend on the passive components, whether wirebound or wireless, to transmit signals among these devices. So it's a network cabling whether in a local area network, metropolitan area network, or wide area network that's at the heart of any data, voice, and video network. This slide shows actual bits or on-off electrical states being transmitted through copper cabling. I'm showing you these slides so they, you will realize that there is an actual physical phenomena of electrical signals being transmitted from a transmitter through a cable to a receiver. The cable could just as well be another transmission media such as optical fiber, air, water, or vacuum. Industry standards are the key to designing, installing, and certify testing network cabling systems. Now, you don't have to follow the standards like you do with national or local codes such as National Electrical Code, but to achieve network performance, you would better follow them in your design. Otherwise, your active electronics will not achieve their required performance. Standards ensure just the minimum acceptable performance. But, and there is very little margin for error. So what you want to do in your design is to design for maximum headroom, like a high jumper who can clear the bar raised to 12 feet, 9 feet often, and 6 feet always. The headroom we want is the maximum, or 6 feet. So this is what you put into your design, the maximum headroom. That way, your network will not slow down or fail when stressed by demands of the active electronics. An ideal structured network cabling system must address the following design criteria. First, it must meet all regulatory codes, such as local and national fire safety codes. It should follow TIA, EIA, that is Telecommunications Industry Association and Electronics Industry Alliance cabling standards. It should exhibit flexibility in its design to allow integration of a wide variety of voice and data components. 
It should also exhibit modularity in its design, which allows for active equipment to be moved and repassed without recabling. And finally, an ideal structured network cabling system should allow for future upgrades, or often called moves, adds, and changes. Here are the primary telecommunications standards organizations that you should know. First, ISO, which is the International Standards Organization, and it's located in Geneva, Switzerland. ANSI, A-N-S-I, stands for the American National Standards Institute, and it's here in the United States. TIA is a Telecommunication Industry Association. EIA, which is Electronics Industry Alliance. CSA, which is the Canadian Standards Association. IEC, which is the International Electrotechnical -Tech Commission located in Europe. Uh, CENELAC, CENELAC, is a European Committee for Electrotechnical Standardization. And finally, the Australian New Zealand uh, uh, Standards Commission. The most important of these is TIA, the Telecommunication Industry Association, because they're the one that actually writes the standards. The telecommunication standards that you should be aware of include, first, the mother of all the standards, called TIA EIA 568B, or the Commercial Building Telecommunications Cabling Standard. It's divided into three main parts. First, the general requirements. Second is called the balanced twisted pair cabling components, or simply the copper cabling, cabling part of the standard, and the optical fiber cabling component standard. Now, TIA 569A is the commercial building standard for telecommunications pathways and spaces. The, uh, 570A, which is residential and small commercial building telecommunications cabling standards. 606, TIA EIA, EIA 606 is the administration standards for telecommunication infrastructure for commercial buildings. And 607 is the commercial building groundings and bonding requirements for telecommunications. Finally, the worldwide or the generic cabling for customer premises is, is the ISO uh, 11801. Additional characteristics of a standards-based structured premises cabling system include, first, it should be open or generic cabling system in its design. It should uh, address industry standards-based single solution. It should support all types of communication systems. It could be either a single building or several continuous buildings, such as a campus. It's vendor and application independent supports multiple applications and independence, supports most local area network technologies, supports multiple logical topologies, supports network device interoperability, and finally, it should support future applications, technologies, and networking devices for the next 10 or 15 years. A land structured cabling subsystem comprised the following modular, independent yet working together subsystems that define a building or a campus uh, cabling system. First, the entrance facility, which is the demarcation point between carrier, either public or private network, and the customer. The outside cables enter the building through the entrance facility. Next is the equipment room which is a centralized space for telecommunications equipment, such as a PBX, private branch exchange, computers, video, and audio switches that serve the entire building or campus. Then the backbone cabling, or the distribution that provides interconnection between telecommunication rooms, equipment rooms, and entrance facilities. The telecommunication room are where the horizontal distribution cables are terminated and cross-connected with the backbone cables. 
The horizontal cabling distribution is the physical media that connects each telecommunication outlet in the work area to the patch panel or punch down low, uh, fields in, in, in the, uh, uh, the telecommunication room. And finally, the work area where you find the, the multimedia drops uh, of, of uh, where your computers and, and telephones uh, connect. It's important to note that campuses with multiple buildings are treated the same as a single commercial building. Also note that the system supports voice as well as data. Video, audio, security, fire alarm, and other applications are also identified in various other standards. This slide shows how a telecommunication network subsystems and topologies are organized. Note the star topology and the hierarchical organization starting with the entrance facility, equipment room, and telecommunications rooms that are all connected together with backbone cabling and cross connects. Then the work areas that connect to the telecommunications room with horizontal cabling. Also note the distance, distance limits mandated by the standards. In the backbone for copper, when the data application is used, the maximum is 90 meters or 295 feet. For voice in the backbone using copper cable, it's 800 meters. When you use optical fiber in the backbone, the multi-mode type of optical fiber, and I'll be talking a lot about this in module nine, uh, the multi-mode optical fiber has a limit of 2,000 meters or 6,560 uh, 6, feet, where single mode has a limitation of 3,000 meters. With regard to the horizontal copper cabling, uh, note that the horizontal link, and, and this is whether it's copper or fiber, the link is a maximum of 90 meters or 295 feet, and the channel is 100 meters or 328 feet. Again, uh, whether you're using optical fiber or copper in the horizontal cabling, the link and channel maximum uh, distances are exactly the same. Here is another presentation of horizontal cabling in a telecommunication room or closet. Take a minute to study this slide. Note the way that the huge number of cables are neatly dressed or arranged on the 19 uh, the 19 inch rack. The TIA EIA standards call for the following minimum performance for unshielded twisted pair copper cable that has 100 ohm impedance. Category three is limited, is limited to voice applications and supports frequencies up to 16 megahertz. Category 5E uh, can be used in voice and data applications up to 100 megahertz, and Category 6 uh, has voice and data applications up to 250 megahertz. Certification performance testing of Category 5E and Category 6 copper UTP cabling involves sophisticated cabling test instrument to, uh, instruments to perform the following tests. First, wire map to check connections. Then length, attenuation, near-end crosstalk, propagation delay, delay skew, equal level firing crosstalk, power sum equal level firing uh, crosstalk, return loss, and attenuation to crosstalk ratio. There are four other tests which I'll be talking about later on as well. Power sum ACR or power sum attenuation to crosstalk ratio is ultimately the best measure of performance capability in copper cabling. Note that the cable performance must operate between the power sum near end crosstalk curve and the attenuation curve and that it is also a function of frequency.
Now let's take a quick look at optical fiber cable, especially uh, the benefits compared to copper. These benefits include, first, that two strands of fiber, one for transmission and one for receiving, typically carry 20,000 two-way voice conversations in the long-haul PowerSum uh, PSTN network. That is the equivalent of about 50 400-pair copper cable. Other features of fiber compared to copper include long-distance signal transmission, large bandwidth, lightweight and smaller diameter, non-conductivity, security, and they can be designed for future application needs. This slide shows how optical fiber is constructed. The core is a central region of an optical fiber through which light is transmitted. The cladding is a material surrounding the core of an optical waveguide. Wave guide. The cladding must have a lower index of refraction to keep the light in the core. The coating is a material put on the fiber during the draw process to protect it from the environment and handling. Single mode fiber is an optical waveguide or core fiber in which the signal travels in one mode. The fiber has a small core diameter, typically 8.3 micron. Multimode fiber is an optical waveguide in which light travels in multiple modes. Typical core cladding size measured in micrometers is 62.5 micron. There's also another type of multimode uh, fiber which has a core size of 50 micron. Again, the cladding on both single mode and multi mode is 125 micron diameter. And fiber can be buffered or unbuffered. Coax cable is a well designed cable, often used for video applications because it can handle a huge range of frequencies. The standards call for using RG6 quad shield coax that has an impedance of 75 ohms and used in video applications. Coax cable consists of a central steel copper flash core surrounded by a foam insulator, a, bra a braided metal foil braided pair, and an outer plastic cover called a sheath. Quad shield cable has two pair of foil braiding. The copper core carries the signal and the foil braided acts as both a shield against noise and a ground for the signal. The insulator layer protects the copper core from the metal shielding. The sheath protects the cable from physical damage. F connectors are used with coax cable. Residential cabling or smart homes is becoming a very hot area in network cabling. In addition to data, voice, and video, it now includes surround sound, security cameras, fire detection, low voltage lighting, and much more. TIA EIA 570A residential and small commercial building telecommunications cabling standard covers uh, these, uh, the, these existing areas of cabling. And stay tuned to the, tele uh, the telephone company's fiber to the home, which will bring us gigabit speeds uh, to connect to Internet 2. As you consider your career in networking and telecommunications, keep in mind several facts about networking. First, that networks never get smaller. Plan for more users, more traffic, more capacity. Also, networks never get slower. Plan for higher speeds, increased throughput, and networks never stay the same. Plan for flexibility, reconfiguration, and manageability. These are what I call the three laws of networking. Similarly, the three laws of networking economics and performance, you should consider First, that price performance of chips double every 18 months. That's according to Gordon Moore. This is called Moore's Law, who, and Gordon Moore founded Intel way back in the 70s. 
Second, that the value of networks is squared in proportion to the number of terminals attached. And this, this law was made famous by uh, Robert Metcalf, who founded uh, a 3Com and first commercial Ethernet. And finally, bear in mind that network speed today, uh, you, you simply have to add zeros every three years. And this is, uh, this is my own law. And you can see that it's coming into play where we're going from uh, you know, 10 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second to a gig to 10 gig to 40 gig, and, and now they're looking at 100 gig uh, Ethernet. Just phenomenal the way the speeds have increased uh, in, in the last few years. It is also very important to note that 70% of all network failures occur due to infrastructure problems. Of anything that we talked about in this first module, please keep that in mind. You're all going to be uh, uh, network specialists, and, and you have to be aware that, again, 70% of all network failures occur due to infrastructure problems. So please focus in on network cabling as you learn about networks. Also, that 70% of all network service calls are cable related, and technicians spend 80% of service calls searching for network problems and 20% actually fixing them. Most of the network troubleshooting time is determining end-to-end -end conductivity. This slide gives you an example of what fast networking speeds could mean to you. Take a few minutes to study it. What I'm saying here in this slide is, I guess, what, what would you pay for to download a full-length movie if you, could, uh, if you had to do it in two hours, the, the way you have to do it today? But look at what it would take to download in one minute, and what would you pay for that? Well, your option to download a movie at home rather than standing in a line of Blockbuster is coming in the real, uh, in the, in the real future. Finally, here is a peek at the future of telecommunication cabling with common speeds of gig, 10 gig, 40 gig, and 100 gig Ethernet in the local area network, campus, metropolitan area network, and finally the wide area network. In summary, we discussed that, along with active electronics, the passive cabling is the other key part of a network. Telecommunications cabling standards are the key to designing, installing, and testing telecommunications cabling. And TIA EIA 568B is the mother of all the standards. The six subsystems of a structured cabling infrastructure include the entrance facility, equipment room, backbone cabling, telecommunication room, horizontal cabling, and finally, the work area. And lastly, the primary cabling media is unshielded twisted pair, four twisted pair, 100 ohm copper, multi-mode and single mode two-strand optical fiber, and RG6 quad shield coax cable. This complete, completes module one. Please take quiz one, and I'll see you in module two.